Motto presents Helen Steve Dave Overkill with encounters of the 6th, 7th, and 8th Talent with Brian Quinn, Walter Flanagan, and Brian Johnson. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Overkill. Bum, 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 bum. Spooky kids. <laughs> and, um. Alright, we're back with the paranormal, with the scary. Yes. Bef- before we get into Overkill, mm-hmm. I, I want to say I was very proud of you two with the live show that we just had in Brooklyn. That first live show in five years, and, and it was – I don't. I actually don't think it could have gone any better. I, I don't felt, think it could have gone any better. Yeah, I felt it went pretty well too. And I'm used to like good crowds. That There was nothing like that crowd, man. That was unbelievable. Standing room only. They were so into it. They got every reference, every joke. Like, man, it, it was uh, – People yelling stuff out. That yeah, it was Triggered great. and shit. <laughs> it was good, man. I was very proud of you guys. How do you feel, Walt, after it? Because I know that was, it was I, your concern. I, I thought it went very, very well. Um, I – like you said, I couldn't be happier with the um, with the energy of the crowd, and it was nice. You know, because I mean, we in the past, I mean, fuck, almost every live show we have ever done, the crowd has been like, "Who? <laughs> Who's this?" <laughs> so there wasn't that level of like um, energy because they were they were waiting for Kevin right. and Mosier to go on whenever we've done another our previous live show. So this one was far different. Um, everybody was just waiting, you know. Since us. Kevin and Moj weren't there, yeah. <laughs> so that that's a big difference in the dynamics. Yeah, you know, from the five years ago, right? And you know, we and I love the, um, I love the aspect of building a, like that that TSD family. So like to bring guys on like Gidham and Jeff uh, up to me is just that that can't be beat. You know, you're building a real podcast family. Yeah. In some cases, uh, it's just as strong as um, a real family. <laughs> yeah, I can vouch for that. <laughs> I, w- I know. I, w- I was, I was I looking could, at you when I said yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd venture to say that Tom Sue Dave family is a, a better family to me than. <laughs> um, I, I was actually thinking. Uh, I, I've often compared us to uh, like we're like the Nirvana of podcasts, right? Sure, all right, yeah. <laughs> you know, you got Walt, I'm he's, he's you. Kurt Cobain. Mm-hmm. You got you, you're Dave Grohl, <laughs> right. and I'm the fat bassist with better hair. All right, nice, uh, nice. But I'm wondering, like, and we could talk about this on Overkill. Do, do you have a will? Like, did you write a? Do you have a will that you signed and everything? No, even you know, even with the um, recent um, events, uh, it hasn't made me. It hasn't, you know. Jarred me enough to go make a mill, make a mill, make a <laughs> make a will. What recent events needing readers no, Mark, from from Mark, Genevieve's? Mark's passing. Oh, the Mar- oh uh, well, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, How soon they forget? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. I, I was I was like, is there something I wasn't aware? Like you went to the doctor or something? No, we we, we I also too want to give. Uh, I, I we waited for UQ because we were going to announce. Um, you know that first. The first tally of what the um, episode two eighty nine on Bandcamp mm, brought in for. That's right, uh, I don't even know. For uh, but I, I mean, yes, I'm not. I don't want to interrupt you. I know you were talking about um, a will. I was just wondering. I mean, since with Q and I, I mean, nobody loves us in every any like real way, right? But Walt has a family. He's got a wife. Kids. <laughs> if Walt goes, are we going to be dealing with a Courtney Love situation where his wife tries to steal the Tell Him Steve Dave catalog oh, yeah. <laughs> and hold it over our heads? And there's two Francis Beans. Oh. <laughs> What do we do here? Well, we gotta sure. we gotta get Walter Will. I'll get yeah. a legal zoom immediately <laughs> and cut and cut Debbie out of everything. She she wouldn't even know where to look for the catalog though. <laughs> Plus we would constantly be like, Deb, could you help us with this financial thing? <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah. Uh Will, huh? I guess I need to make one. You haven't done it either. Nah, even with even with the swollen well, when Damn, I got – there were there was 
There was um, a night. Oh, could you play a thunderclap after this next sentence? There was a night when all the main sickness was going on that I was absolutely convinced I was going to die. I was like, like I was like, this is it. I'm, I'm going to die. Like I feel this sick, you know. And, and my did head. you make a makeshift will I on did. toilet paper or something? Uh, basically, yeah. Not toilet what did paper, I get? but yeah. <laughs> What's that? What did I get? Uh, it was more of a broad strokes thing than like down into into uh, a political way of saying nothing. <laughs> wow, are you saying are you saying that I, yeah. I didn't even make it on, on the list on the piece? Well, the, it was more like just a, just something? a division of like uh, I just an alter fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just drew a picture of you sucking a dick. <laughs> I'm not sure how to interpret this, <laughs> uh, but I what, did. What yeah. did Brian get then? No, no, it wasn't specific. It was more like just. If this house goes here, and 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 my cats were taken care of, um, and uh, and the vision of like just the overall broad assets that I have, that was it. Uh, None to us. I mean, that's what he's saying. Well, nobody was named specifically. It we got to name somebody. Like, Who's the executor, man? Well, that would be my parents. In that time, my life, like last year when I thought I was going to go, my parents were obviously going to outlive me if I had died that mm-hmm. night. So I just put them in charge. That will is not binding or legal. It's not. It yeah, wasn't a will. <laughs> it wasn't a will. It was just like, look, if I go, like I know my family will just do what I ask them to do. So right. Well, I mean, don't you think that they would have hand- like they would do what you wanted anyway? Probably. Well, I don't the, think that. I mean, mo- look, the- I, I put such a large amount of money aside for the cats <laughs> that, that I had to make sure <laughs> like that Leona like, Helmsley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I had to make sure that like I can't have them three split up and given to this person. It, like, it basically the house was placed. In trust of someone who was going to keep the house for as long as the three cats were alive, and the cats, you know, had a certain amount of money put aside to them, and then the rest was kind of divided. How long up. are the, how long's the, the the average length of life for a cat? Well, if he left that house to me, they would live to be like sixty years old, yeah. <laughs> as far as that, as far as anyone knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think the average age of cat is like you know seventeen, eighteen, like Oof, well, okay. fifteen on up. But um, my friend's cat just died, and she was 23. Mm. So it can okay. go on. So it can help. Yeah. I just didn't want them to end up on this, out on the street. Oh, you were talking about Mark, Marco. Yes, the episode 289. Uh, we put it up last week. We had it. Uh, um, I tell you, man, you, you, you see it. You saw it firsthand when we did, we, uh, in Brooklyn. But the um, that listener base is pretty darn decent and they came out and they really um shocked shocked me with the total that we were able to pull together from the first um for the first you know couple days of it being up there i think right now we've sold over thirty five thousand dollars in episode 289 sales wow the, yeah, the last the last Declan told me, and this was like five days ago. It was like almost at thirty seven. Snooch to the dooch. No <laughs> um, so yeah, people were very good about it. Well, I, I only saw one person who good. was like, "There's fucking no episode last week, and this week I got to pay." I said, "No, you don't have to do any of that block. Just block this <laughs> fucking dumbass." I mean, which which is like, no, you don't have to, but don't fucking complain. It it did a lot. It did a lot for me mentally because I'll be honest, man. I could not see myself keep bringing the energy that needed to be bought to planning for three hundred. I felt very shitty about being like, well, now I got to plan something fun in a wedding with all this going on. But now I feel more like not obligated. It's not the right word, but like when you when people come out like that, on um, be on our like. A, after we make a request for them to come out mm-hmm. and they come out like that, you, mean you can't – now I feel like it more in a better headspace to be like, well, Good, I, can, I can really um, devote 100 percent and not feel like shitty that I'm, I'm devoting time to something fun now. Right. Does that make sense? It does. Well, that is a heavy survivor's guilt, man. Well, I mean I worked with the guy every day. I talked to him a lot. I mean yeah. I – it, it's not often that you may, that I make a, a friend at mm. this stage, so – Oh, I hear it you. was <laughs> it was diff- it was difficult and because he was because I generally liked the guy a lot and I knew that um you know maybe there was something if I had just maybe saw something or or did something different but of course you know there really wasn't anything there's nothing you can do no but this but like I said this kind of gives me that feeling of like 
I can go. I can really like just be like, let's just have a fucking great time at three hundred now. Right. Let's just guess. You know, I don't know. It's almost like it was like you know. I don't know what the word is. Inspiring. But spot. It definitely inspiring, but also like that little like green light. Like you can do. You can. You can now like have fun at this, doing this, and planning it. Do you think that's because? I mean, it's such an outpouring from the ants, and it's it's an incredible amount of money, and everybody really came through. Do you think? He's like, like, I better do it. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, like yeah, a warm, the, fuzzy feeling type thing. It's both. It's yeah. a, a obligation and uh, and also warm, fuzzy. I mean, it, it was the same thing. I think it was a turning point of like where I started to really feel like I wanted to, um, like years ago, where I wanted to be more, more. What's it called? I don't know what the word is, but more involved or more like put more thought into this was after sandy when we had a gigantic response to the christmas episode after sandy right that was a turning point where i was like these people deserve nothing less than my than my 100 percent right. attention and whatever i can think of that will that may bring some form of entertainment to them yeah death and natural disaster spur you on <laughs> yeah there's a there's a heavy feeling of like man they like if they come through how can i give anything less than right. not that i think it's going to be good I don't know, but I'll, but I'm certainly going to give a hundred percent effort to try to uh, do something that is um, uh, worth and and worthy of a of a three hundredth episode. That's cool. Well, it is like this is kind of like it's weird. Like we get into especially once we stopped going online and like reading comments and and I don't really go on like Twitter even too much anymore. It becomes like a one way street. Like we just come here and bullshit and then put it out and I almost never even hear reactions to episodes anymore. I get a little more than you guys cuz at the live shows I get to interact with the ants and stuff, but it is like when they pour out like that for Mark, a guy they didn't really even know, they just know he was important to you and us. And then what we saw the other night at the at the at the live show, it's just like you're right. There's that community. There's that that thing that's yeah. just like that's people don't have that. Like a lot of like, uh, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, do other? I don't know if I mean. I'm sure. Like I'm sure. Like you know, Smod has that, and I'm sure uh, I saw Comics has that. But um, right. But do other pods other than I don't on think the they Smod, do. I don't think have they do. that kind of level of like in, intense. No. Um, well, you know why? Get because, your back, kind of. Um, the, the the I think the big reason is because most. Uh, podcast bigger ones they don't really interact with listeners on the mm. level that we do and um i saw an article about the the pod fest thing and somebody said i wrote an article uh somebody wrote an article dot uh, daily dot or something and uh <clears throat> they mentioned us and they said you know three regular middle-aged guys just joking around and i think that's it is that you just I like that we're now being described as middle aged guys. <coughs> Thank God it's not old. <laughs> the other day Sage came home from school and she punched me in the stomach. She goes, Come on, old man. <laughs> like messing <laughs> around. Like, like, true, did she, really? she really did. Oh, yeah, I'm not God, even kidding around. Because yeah, we always wrestle and stuff. I was like, old like where did you learn that? <laughs> um But yeah, I, I think it's because it's true. It's a perfectly summed up, just three regular guys shooting the shit and Joking around and that's it. It's relatable. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent right. So thank you guys. So it's what we're saying. <clears throat> yeah, Over they the have thank, yeah, thank yeah. you for uh, <laughs> and um, it's. I I was able to tell Mark's wife and uh, her reaction was you know that's what you guys would expect. Very overwhelmed and uh, very appreciative and. You know, it's going to help her really try to um, get back and on her feet and try to, I guess, go on. When, you know, after something like that. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown bored. <laughs> I want to talk about spooky stuff. I'm texting with Troy. Um, he had a really good time the other night at the live show. Yeah, he got a little, he got a little hammered. Did you notice? <laughs> <laughs> It was funny to see him because Troy doesn't really put out boyish energy all that often. Yeah. But he was so excited to be there. You know what I mean? It was great. Well, Q, you were worried. You were very. You, you couldn't stop being very concerned about our lack of energy I mean, when me, Q, when me, uh, Gidham, and Jeff showed up and we met up together. You were like, you couldn't. You were like, I sen- I sensed a little worry that you were like, the energy level isn't where it needs to be, boys. Well, 
I not worried, but it was noticeable. I know you were nervous, <laughs> so I like I got it. And Sunday, Jeff, for some reason, he becomes a firecracker when the mic's on. But when the mic's not on, he's kind of just <laughs> yeah. there. But our big player was get him, and he's the wild card, <laughs> right? And like get him, like I saw because we interact with get him in a, like this environment, and he's kind of very comfortable here, so he's funny and charming and like blah blah blah. But I kind of saw that. Other side of him that like that that like what does he have Asperger's thing? Because because yeah. he was just like we were all sitting around the bar before the show, and he's standing off to the side just kind of staring out the window. And I go get him. I'm like, why don't you come in and talk? And he's like, no, nah, it's too tight in there. He goes, it's and too that's tight. not a real window. <laughs> I told Q we were because we were in the bar. I was like, because I looked at I looked at get him. I looked at Jeff. I looked at myself. And I go, we are the equivalent of like you remember in the, in the thing, the John Carpenter's thing. Yeah. Go, we're three guys. We're three replicants just waiting for a hot wire to be poked on us, and, to, and like, can we show that we're not real human beings. <laughs> that's a pretty good analogy. Yeah, yeah I was. I, I, I knew that um, you were a little nervous. Declan told me for some reason that you felt nervous. He's like, look yeah, out for I'm your boy. nervous. Look out for your boy. But I knew once we were up there, you'd do fine. And you did. You did great. You know? No, thank you. All of you guys did good. You did great. And it was fun. And I'm sure when people get a chance to listen to it, they're going – I mean there are some amazing um, surprises and um, – some nice new Tell em Steve Dave lore. Some new mm-hmm. lore is revealed. Some new uh, history and is made. I mean, is it is it at this point that we tell him it's on Bandcamp? I guess I, I, that's where, I thought that's where this was going. <laughs> that's where the last twenty minutes is going. Okay. All right, get him. Story number one. Story. Go. Story number one. Due to a traffic violation, I had to hire a lawyer. It was the same lawyer who defended my father on murder charges. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Hutt's attorney at law. <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? Again, due to a traffic violation, I had to hire a lawyer. The same lawyer who defended my father against murder charges. We should have charged three times as much for these fucking tickets. <laughs> Oh, I hope that's the true one. <laughs> Story number two. Story number two. I was contacted by the police to gather evidence <laughs> on a doctor I was a patient of. Just repeat that. Say it again. I didn't hear it. Everybody was laughing too much. <laughs> I was contacted by the police to gather evidence on a doctor I was a patient of. <laughs> two for two has to do with the law. <laughs> Story number three. Story number three. On my 18th birthday, I received a letter from my birth parents, kept sealed in my file, in which they said they were deep cover operatives. (laughs) Spies. My real last name is Rosenberg. Yeah, you can go buy it at Bandcamp if you, you want to listen to uh, the magic. And what, what are we entitling it? Um, Night at the Bell? I, I think it was it um, Bell House. Bell House. Yeah, I think it was um, – uh, Oh, no, it was New York, New York City, City Pod Fest. Podfest 2016, The Long Burn. Okay, so it's up nice. there. You can go listen to it. Mm. And, um, For money. Experience, experience what uh, everyone was buzzing about. Yeah. You excited about the Gramercy show now, Walt? Does it change your, yes. your mind about it? I had it? a new uh, member. The ticket sales, you were saying, what can we do? Yeah. I got it. I told Bri. I don't think I told you. Did I tell you? No. I want to do. Did we we aired that commercial that we ran, <laughs> that we recorded? Yeah, but this is a new We promised the new fucking thing. world. Okay, now this we got new something thing. new. I got right. it. It's guaranteed. Wait, what's uh, guaranteed? To two, whatever. New? I guess you wanted two shows, right? I want two shows. Okay. Yeah. I want to do a, um, a Baron Von Flanagan segment. Mm-hmm. I want to come out as Baron Von Flanagan, all dressed Get out. as Baron Von Flanagan, and I'll spit blood. <laughs> and then I'll sit down and I'll read facts from the internet. Well, you and I serve pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I got Jay Sarge going to create some sort of weird, right. freaky. Well, you know what? We'll get a fog machine. So when you come out, oh. like it's just like, oh, man, this is fucking great. 
Oh my god, that would be awesome! Yeah. And like and like str- and like strobe lights. Yeah. yeah, this is all stuff we can get at Spencer's for like nineteen bucks. It'll be great. <laughs> I'll come out. I'll I'll, I'll do a, some a Baron von Flanagan quick segment in the Baron von Flanagan. Nice. I see like attire. a cape, like a widow's peak. <laughs> And the character, which is basically just you and being like put in a thunderclap there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'll have a little button I could, like we'll, 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 that will press. So every time I say, I say a, a, a fact, right, we'll hit the thunderclap for the crowd. Fucking beautiful. Uh, what do you think? That's now beautiful. we'll do that too for two shows. If we sell out the first show, right? Okay, so no Baron von Flanagan if that first show doesn't go. Oh, uh, it's too it, late. I already brought the attire. So we okay. got, I, definitely, <laughs> I was so excited. I, I saw I saw a cape at um, at Party City. I bought it. Oh, that's great. My daughters just start crying. <laughs> <laughs> He's not buying a cape. <laughs> oh, this is a dry no, dog. They wouldn't cry. This is a vampire cape. This is a manly cape. Oh, yeah? Yeah, this ain't no Liberace right. cape. <laughs> Is Are you going to bedazzle that, Dad? <laughs> I was like, no, this is the kind of cape that, you know, it's all man. It's a pimp cape. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so where, where, where do people Purple go? To, uh, how, is, how are the ticket sales? Um, Are they doing not, – not doing too good, right? They're not doing bad. Not doing bad. But they're now bad. let's see what happens now with a right. promised a, a sighting of the Baron. Right. Well, also, I think anybody that was at the Bell House show – I don't think so. People were like, I, some guy came up to me. He was like, "I'm from Australia." I don't uh, think I'm, you're gonna, I'm from <laughs> Texas. I'm from the UK. It was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get that level because now it's not. Now it's almost like it was once every five years. It was like Haley's comment was more common. Right. Now you're fucking. You're doing it like two months later. It's like, oh, hey guys, <laughs> we're back. <laughs> Did you ever leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I got a feeling you may not flooding seen, the market. Yeah, you may not see that same level of like. No, um, but anybody. Who, well, I'm not talking about people. Who flew people to traveling from all but over. But I mean, people who were there that had fun at the show. I don't see how. They wouldn't be like, I'm gonna go, I gotta go to Gramercy show because it's a different show every night, and then it's like it's, it was so much fun. And I mean, and I already have a promise from from get him to come out and uh, sing another song nice. for for the uh, Gramercy and Baron and whatever else we're gonna do. Right, a whole bunch. Of, we're gonna have so it, much good. <laughs> good stuff. You can't miss this one. And you can. we stayed. Until like two in the morning. You can't miss it uh, unless you can't. I guess you're gonna miss it. Uh, We we stayed until like two in the morning taking pictures and stuff. Yeah, I heard. To the point where the the security guys were annoyed. Yeah, they were like, "Guys, you gotta get the fuck out of here." So we'll try and that was cool. Figure out a better system. Well, it's the ants. You know what I mean? You gotta try and do it. Because I mean, mean, you've you've went on record that you hate doing it, and yet you still did it. So that means says yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't hate doing it for the ants. That's, That's the thing. What I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got vouch for that too. You, you were having a good time. It was good. It's yeah. nice because everybody's like inside jokes. It's like it's just good. It's fun. Damn. But anyway, let's get to some spooky shit. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Why do you have a will? <laughs> Come on. Well, what's he gonna? What's he, he leaves gonna his debt to someone? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote on toilet paper. <laughs> Quinn, pay credit card bill. <laughs> I leave you my debt. Yeah. <laughs> like Suzanne just shows up my house with luggage. Yeah. <laughs> Sage punches her stomach. She's like, hey, old man. Like, we belong to you now. <laughs> like, Come on in. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you said you got some good stuff. I got man. some. I got, you know, I mean, again, I feel like we got to come strong or don't come at all. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple really good um, overkill stories, and I also have one story that is an overkill exclusive. It's... We are going to reveal something that the rest of the world doesn't know of of the paranormal nature, and it will forever change. It could... Potentially could forever change um, our podcast forever if um, by revealing this information. It's Holy gonna shit. jolt the world. It's gonna yeah. make them stand up and take notice. You know, like on our previous overkills, we've just gone and told stories that are out there. Yeah. Well, now we are going to reveal a story to the world that will shock and blow overkill people's brains. Overkill exclusive. Yeah, that's going to Sunday Jeff is an alien. Um, it, it involves the, <laughs> maybe the world's largest retailer. And it is shocking, and uh, is I mean I I, th- I guess we don't want to lead with that one, but um, yeah. So we're about we're going to reveal that before the end of the episode. Wow, that, that's, and, you want to be uh, who's you want that to be your finale? What? Who's the world's biggest retailer? I think Walmart, right? Well, let's well maybe we'll find brick and out. mortar or, or yeah or brick and mortar. Okay. Maybe we'll find out in uh, in about. 
20 minutes. Okay. Wow. All right. So what are we leading with then? Oh, well, I got, a, I got a few good – I got a couple good ones. I know bry has got one, a couple. Right. He's got yeah. some missing people I hear. Yeah, I love missing people. I read about them constantly. <laughs> it's like, Trump's like, I love the un- uneducated. <laughs> yeah. Brian Johnson's like, I love missing people. <laughs> well, I love the cases. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so fucking weird. I can't, I can't take it. I, I just – I read about it and I'm like, somebody knows. Like somebody knows. I, I read so many today alone about like a person goes missing – and then the survivors or the parents or whomever, husband, like, gets phone calls with nobody oh. on the other end or a phone call from the cell phone where they hear something and then it just goes dead and then you don't hear shit Ooh. again. And you're just like, where the fuck are all these people going? I mean, I would Other countries, ditches, right? ditches, yeah, like buried. Like, there's so many people buried out there, man. The Pine Barrens alone have got to be <laughs> riddled with corpses, right? Did you see that Pine Barren story? In the news? No. <clears throat> Down in South Jersey, there, somebody complained of like some criminal mischief. This is a Hitler. It could, could be a Hitler thing. Oh, this is a – It's, it's like a crossover. Yeah. You hit learn something new every day? Mm-hmm. Okay. This is a crossover. Hitler was buried in the Pine Barrens? No. Uh, but his lookalike was running around in the Pine Lands with uh, – I guess he was like one of these militia guys, he, he and his friend. Wait, and they're on re- private property. Recently or in the 40s? No, this is like a couple weeks ago. So, and, so um, he's a lookalike. For, so he's lookalike is nine is like over ninety years old. You mean? I'll um I'll pull is him. This is a real person that posts this. Okay, let me let II? me specify by <laughs> or uh, by saying clarify by saying lookalike. He had a Hitler mustache. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's I just see. saw a rec- I just saw a Hitler a Hitler sighting too. There, my local McDonald's. There's a there is the there's an obese Hitler working there. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like Fat a nine, Hitler, a nine hundred pound. Fat like, news and fear your information. Wow. Holy shit! I told my girls, I was like, "Doesn't that guy look like fat, obese Hitler?" And Hitler, like, and they're like, "Who?" <laughs> they're like who? Um, or Fatler would make more sense. Yeah, Fatler. I like Fitler. But Fitler has the word fit, so it, yeah, then he would be a obese. jack guy he would like a fucking oh, name. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's okay, Fitler. Like, you could call him unfitler. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see, South Schittler. Jersey, Ash, a little fucking shit. Fat back. shit. Um, <laughs> uh, men with guns, let's see. Um, I wish, oh, fuck, I can't find it. Oh, wait, no, here it is. Police find suspected white supremacist with stockpile of guns and ammo in New Jersey woods. Um, it was down in South Jersey in the Pinelands. Uh, here he is. Oh, yeah, it does like, look like Hitler. Right? Holy shit. What a weirdo. Mm-hmm. So uh, he was down there messing around. He had an AK-47. He's mentally ill, right? That a handgun. Guy? There's something wrong with him. Yeah, I mean, he's 42. How could you care that much <laughs> about anything, let alone white supremacy? <laughs> and then you're going to shave your like a mustache but so at the least world he, knows. If you're going to cultivate this look, this right. Hitler look. At least you're in the right field of work. You're you're working in a militia. Sure. You're gathering guns. Is right. that work? Why is fucking obese Hitler at McDonald's and the management's not like, hey, bro, you got to fucking change that look? That is <laughs> Did not. Did he have the co- comb over? Yeah. And, and he, and he oh, had the, yeah. Little, the little mustache. Yeah. The mu- and I'm like, hmm. I'm like, how does management not be like that? Is not conducive to selling chicken McNuggets or whatever we're doing here because people are going to everybody and their brother who pulls up to the fucking window is going to be like, there's fat Hitler. Right. Nobody is going to not say it. And I don't think it. I don't think. I think we also have every right to be like you've got to either change the mustache, oh my god, yeah, or comb your hair differently. There's this girl on Staten <laughs> Island who's wearing. Who she works at Home Depot, and she's wearing a hat that says "America was never great." She's like one of the counter women there, and it's raising a, a brouhaha across Staten Island. Have you oh. seen her? Have you? I haven't. Where she work? Home Depot. Home Depot, and Home Depot let her, you know lets her wear Home, the hat. You know, that. is she American? I I only know what I saw on the cover, like the local newspaper, <laughs> okay, and what some of the guys uh, told and me. You know, like you know that our the, like some of our our fiercest, pr- proudest Americans are guys who work with tools. Sure, you don't want to fucking fuck with them. She, that could hurt the bottom care. line for Home Depot. But you know, Home Depot's got, a, but it's so corporate that they can't probably they can't take a risk. Well, of do you have uh, to wear like? Work appropriate clothes. You can't like if I wanted to. You know how they have hats with those two like foam tits on them. You know no. what I mean. You ever see these? No. I really? used to wear that when I uh, worked at a daycare center. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Hold on. They're yeah, like base, I know exactly like what trucker you're caps. With um, hold on. Here you go, Q. Um, 
Home Depot employee gets online scorn for her hat. It causes a stir and death threats. It's a political statement. Do, do political statements have a place at Home Depot? Oh, and she's an angry black lady, it would appear. Well, Crystal you. Lake. I'm sure that's her real name and not her poor name at all. There she is, Q. Oh, whoa, she does look pissed in that photo. Right? America was never great. You can't wear that hat and have a smile on. She supports Bernie Sanders, says she received death threats uh, uh, after showing her cap. She's 22, which means, you know. She's 22? She knows, she knows everything. She looks like she's – I mean, I've heard black don't crack, and a lot of black people definitely look young. She looks 42. She does not look 22. She's the exception to this rule. Um, I guess it's because she doesn't like Donald Trump. Oh, OK. So – but yeah. I All right. But there's She's got tired to be a better way of like just like – but like, like Home Depot should have some sort of like no political statements on the entire police. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think they're – they're within their rights. Like, Take the fucking hat off. We're trying to move and lumber the here, shit. man. <laughs> we got to get yeah. this lumber out the door. Now, and you see like almost every – I mean everybody has some sort of American flag bumper sticker on their pickup who goes into Home Depot. Yeah. Those are go. Those are what – those guys like they're the lifeblood of America. Yeah, it was just – Which is ironic because it's today. probably mostly Mexican guys that are going in there, but <laughs> – <laughs> Is that a, that's is that how a, fucking patriotic. That's how patriotic is that these a Mexican guys are. Thing, like because I, I like that's always everybody's first answer is like you just hire a couple of Mexicans and take care of it. Like that's no matter where you go in the country, that's everybody's first answer for labor. Yeah, we gotta we'll go down to Home Depot. We'll grab a couple of Mexicans and then we'll go do some work. They do great work. These guys, I've uh, heard that so many times in my I, life. I've done it several times. The last time I moved, went down, picked up a couple guys by uh, Wawa. They're not allowed to hang out by the train station anymore. Went down to right. Wawa, grabbed a couple guys. We moved some shit. How much do you pay them? Like, what's the rate? Do you negotiate it there on the spot? It's, I asked him. I was like, how much do you guys get? And from uh, – like, I remember it like w- maybe 10, 15 years ago. People are like like paying them slave wages. They they wised up, man. They're like, fuck this shit. Now they get like 10, 12, 15 bucks. Oh, really? Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe I should make that call to get him and tell him maybe I offered that job too soon. Yeah. You could get his Mexican <laughs> equivalent. <laughs> I'll get them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you do if Mike starts wearing a, a, a hat that says America was never great? He's, he's very uh, staunch in his opinion. I, I, I think we're close enough where I could be like a poem aside and like Chief. take the fucking hat off your fire. <laughs> I go, it looks like you may have some issues with um, <laughs> something's going on. I can tell. He's like, you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I can tell something's buggy. There's something eating at you. I go, I know it's mostly by the affects in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I know, I know the hat is, 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 uh, is, um, is represents something that's much deeper and that's hurting you. What's hurting you, my friend? <laughs> what if he like was like? Because you know we got transgender, right? What, Mike? No, not Mike. Oh. <laughs> but we have the transgender now. Yes. That's normal, yeah. right? That's that's the new normal. Well, transgender, you, you know, it's protected. Everybody's got to accept it. If a woman says she's a woman, she's a woman, right? Or, or, or vice cis. versa. Or a man says he's a man, then right. he's a man. No, okay. there's they're cis scum. Whatever, no, but like we're all on board because mainly who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Right. But what is it? And the day is coming where it's going to be uh, like I was born with a wrong racial identity. Well, that day has come already. That day came already? That, that, that lady, remember? She said that it was a lady. She worked for the uh, NAACP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a whole, it was like a year ago, a little bit better than But a year wasn't ago. she actually part. No, she was white. She was just white? <laughs> yeah, she was just a white lady. Oh, I thought she yeah, had she was some. She kind of tan. She had a little bit of a fro jammy going right. on. Right. Uh, and she was like, I'm black until somebody was like, no, you're not. And she was like, yeah, I am. And then, but, you know, people took her to task for it. Hmm. Why? <laughs> Mostly because she wasn't black. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but if you identify as black and you were born well, in the wrong race. Hey, like- hey that's. That's exactly the point, man. I'm not even right. saying that mockingly. I mean, like, right. if we've opened that door, like, why is that door shut for anybody? Because sometimes it's ridiculous, though. Like, if when? if if I was to be like I'm transgender, black, <laughs> and I and I and I kept saying that over and over again, I mean, it would it just it would, doesn't make it true. Yeah. But how is that different from you saying like, well, I'm a woman, I was born in the wrong body? Because if you really felt that way. Hormones. Well, I'm not yeah. just saying – well, it's just saying that to bust my chops. Right. I mean if like somebody's legitimately like – I think I was I, 
I should have been born black. But, but see, then you're a fucking idiot because it's about oh. genetics. And, and it's about if both your parents are white. Look, if you had a, a black parent and a white parent and you're born white, right? which I don't think really happens, but let's say that was a situation, then you could be like, all right, well, I identify. Africa, but how is it? But sex, though, is can be a, that is all about like chemicals and hormones and feel and, and just, you know. <laughs> Feelings. Yeah, and, and real 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 deep feelings of of um yeah but racial is, is only that's that's only because you like rap music or something i see <laughs> all right <laughs> right i mean <laughs> that's what makes you black is like you like rap music. no no if you're like if, if i was like oh you know, like the white guys like you know who you know i'm familiar with white guys it. what's you know, the word like, what's the word into well? rap and everything and so you know i'm wearing a wu-tang shirt right now yeah but they they but What's they, that word that they call them, though? I can't I don't remember. remember. <laughs> but they um, start with a they, W. I feel like. Talking about wiggers. They, 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 <laughs> they, they I'm trying to get them to say. <laughs> <laughs> they feel they feel like they're more comfortable in the um, in black pop culture. They like the they like the rap. They like well, it's the, very um, trendy and, and hip and everything. Yeah, uh, I'm telling you, I live next to a guy that like he was he's his his last name was literally White <laughs> and. <laughs> and um, he uh, he w- would um, you know co-opted the whole like like, like when they were outside the house mm. they, with their friends it was the abonics and all that uh, but then when I talked to him it was like you know he reverted back to like the super white ninth grade right it's soccer Ali G. player that Ali G right. right? Wouldn't, they, wouldn't you say that was a that's right. like he's doing mm. the equivalent of uh, the cartoon character of, mm-hmm. of what we're talking about? Yeah, here? yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's a sticky wicket, and again, it's one that I don't, I don't care about. I think it is sticky. I disagree. I think it's. I think if you're if you're allowing men to say that they're women, and we all ha- we all agree that they are they are now women. Bruce Jenner is a woman. That. <laughs> There's really no difference between someone saying because because he hasn't had the struggles of a woman, you know what I'm saying? Like growing up as a woman in America it comes yeah, with but he's had but he had the struggle inside of his head, which may be even more. Yeah, but that's a different struggle. But it's yeah. It so it's, if we're saying a struggle is a struggle, then I'm saying it's also a struggle for somebody in a, in a white person's body to be like I was I was born white, but I'm really black. What about right. that struggle? That, because there is no struggle. It's I was born white, but I like. Black culture. No, and black I'm talking shit. about the transsexual people aren't just like it's not just a decision. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, but this one is a decision, though. The one but, isn't. But one if, is. But how could you say that if they really feel in their heart that they are born in the wrong race? How how who are we to say that that we're that they're wrong? I, I think society at large is like fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Shut the I'll, fuck up with I, that shit. I don't think they are now. I think not now they are. I don't think, I think can Hughes. Do. I think Hughes. Oh no! I, th- I think this is going to crescendo and apex, and then people will st- start being like, "Enough's enough." Yeah. You identify. You know, there, there was. I saw this thing with a college uh, college student experiment, where it's a guy who went up and talking to people, and he's like, "You know, if I told you I identified as a woman, now this is a six foot tall, white dude, dark, you know, brown hair." And m- most of the people are like, cool, you know, good for you. And then it got progressively like to the point where he's like, I identify as a six foot tall Chinese woman. And there, I mean, no matter how crazy it got, college right. students would not just say, come on. Cause you can't come on. Well, I because feel- you want to be, because I think uh, especially youth, they want to be, they want to feel and, uh, Precipitate that, you know, like. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's right. that's good. But no, I don't no, think that's just like you're fucking mentally ill. You're obviously not a six foot tall Chinese woman. I don't, know. I don't give a fuck right, what but, you identify as. You're, you're mentally ill if you're. But like, I think like you believe it. But, but I think we're but why people are trying to create an atmosphere where, like, hey, man, it doesn't matter whatever you feel that makes you feel better. Let's just go with it. Let's just let's just roll with it. It, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. You like that. I do like that. I think Today. that's the way the world. <laughs> no, I mean in general because I don't care. I don't it's care only about anything taxes anymore. for extra bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! But I, I think I'm that, not talking I, about taxes anymore. I'm done with. Right, taxes. What does this have to do with somebody going missing though? I don't know. I don't know how we got it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what's your missing? Oh, we were, oh no, we were talking about for your information. And that guy that was running around down in the he woods. He went missing in the woods, huh? No, he did not. That yeah. actually had nothing to do with it. I just oh. thought of it. <laughs> but he had um, magazines, you know, gun mag- like the bullets. 
uh, in New Jersey limits 15. He had a whole bunch of like 30 rounders. He had a 100 round drum. Like they caught him with AK 47. You can't fucking have that in New Jersey. Like that dude is fucked. And it may, it's good for him that he has the Hitler thing going because when he goes to jail, which he definitely will. Oh, he'll have friends. Yeah. All he has to say is like, hey, I'm a white supremacist. Right. And then he's going to be, you know, he already has protection. Yeah. Is that what you did when you got that parking ticket? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I immediately fucking shaved my mustache down. <laughs> In the back of the cop car. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I'm not done yeah, yet. I'm like, can you slow down? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this hurts. Can you go to Rite Aid? I need, I'm chafing. I need some bomb. <laughs> Um, no, okay, here's the angry lady. Had, uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> where's my disappearance? Did you watch Preacher? No, I heard my, uh, Mike watch it. I heard he wasn't that, um, he said he was very different than what he thought it was going to be. Well, I know they changed the whole yeah. storyline, but I can't wait. I recorded it. I'm going to watch it tonight. I can't fucking wait, dude. Yeah. Very, uh, a lot of people. I bet you it did very, very well, too. Yeah, I hope so. I had a I had a phone call the other day, Q. Yeah? Touchofmodern.com. They called you or you called them? I had to call them and I had to check in with the phone, like the, the code and all that shit. And I talked to the Touch of Modern guy and the ad people. But what is Touch of Modern? Touch of Modern. Oh, Jesus Christ. Touch of Modern, the perfect gift. Now, this is really sort of um, male-centric, this site. Oh, no. Yeah. It's it's very it's well, really me. really directed uh, at this. Uh, it even says here the perfect gift for all the guys in your life: uh, dad, husbands, brothers, uncles who are notoriously hard to shop for. Now I'm going to sum it up for you, right? Um, uh, just like I did when I was on the phone call, I said to the touch of modern guy, I said, "So let's just put it out there: this is a bunch of shit that nobody needs." You said that, yes, okay, but a lot of it is very cool, and you would want. Right. Just like unusual stuff, you know what I mean? Like a husband or a wife. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, jaw-dropping tech gadgets and gear, home brewing kits and premium sticks. It has a whole bunch of different stuff. And what the, their big thing is like I guess they go around all over the place looking for cool shit and then they'll buy it. They put it on the site for a limited amount of time at a, like a pretty steep discount and then boom, it's gone. That sounds pretty cool. It actually is. Uh, I think you have fifty dollars in an account. Whoa! I, what? I, I believe so. Yeah. Why come? I'm not getting these emails. I don't know. They deleted from my my box. Mm-hmm. Touch of modern. Touch of modern. I want to buy useless shit. It is, but there is like they have really cool watches. They had a cool mm-hmm. basketball I wanted to buy. Mm-hmm. Every time you go to the site, it's like being a kid in a candy store. Mm. Was that ever the? Was that the case? Like, what would could be considered like Cat's Confectionery? Well. Oh, well, yeah, that was there was a candy store above on Snug Harbor. Remember? On Snug Harbor? Yeah, it was like a like a it had it was candy when I first moved to the Highlands. It was just real, it was, candy. That was it. Yeah, it was just candy. What a weird place! Like you couldn't do that today unless you were in like a mall, right? What a candy store is one right across the street. Yeah, how well do they do? Well, that's like high end chocolate for fucking fancy pants, though. You know, there's no discount like a touch of modern. New sales literally launching every day. Go to touchamodern.com. Q. You're going to like some of the stuff. I'm You'll like it. Look. Yeah, I'm You'll looking. Like I'm it. trying to look, but their website, their, their mobile yeah, I think experience. That this is a site that was made for guys like you, guys yeah. in the fast lane. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This is the, this is the, when you, you don't have time to shop for cool gadgets. Well, they got cool wallets. So you go to Touch a Modern, and that's where you're like, All right. you know. Oh, they sell beef jerky? Tactical gear? Yeah, all right. I can tools. see it. It's like 50 bucks here. Star Wars cufflinks? Yeah. I see what you mean. Like, just fun shit. No essentials. No essentials. Just stuff that's kind uh, yeah. of fun and unique. I'm in. That's touchamodern.com slash T-E-S-D, I'm assuming. I don't think it really says here. There's a, they're not tracking it, so. Right. So they'll never know. They'll never know. That we said it's useless shit. How many units shit. we moved. Yeah, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you shouldn't go there and check it out, though. No, yeah, yeah I would definitely check it out. I mean, there's definitely uh, some. It's of- at least one thing you want on there. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Meundies, Walt. I've seen people saying, "Meundies, we want to see a Walt Flanagan print." That's right. Or we're gonna fucking riot. <laughs> we'll fucking forgot. burn this motherfucker down. <laughs> is what they said. I'm in. <laughs> you don't got a pair of Meundies last week. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm still getting the fucking. You told me you'd call about the boxers. 
Um, you didn't do it. I didn't. You know what? I'll talk to I'll talk to our guy about boxes it. Boxes or what? Well, because I don't boxers. wear the boxer oh, briefs, boxers, so I wanted uh, boxers. Me on these boxer shorts. Yep, the the copy is still referencing Superman. You like Superman, right, Q? I oh, fucking he's my favorite, dude. Instead of making Your a favorite? statement, over Superman's Batman? my favorite. Yes, always been a Superman guy over Batman. The big blue Boy Scout over uh, the bat. There, yeah, over Batman. I mean, That's they're pretty close. It's not like I'm like Ugh, Batman. Spider Man. Superman's always been my favorite. I always like the notion of a guy who's just good, for goodness' sake. I like that. That's like a that's a hero to me. You're gay. I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Superman's the Superman's tough to pull off in this day and age. You know. I don't think he is. But most people are like either either a Batman. People guy. are too cynical, right? Yeah, there's no room for a, a Superman in our world. Some might say we need that more than ever. Then some might say that. I would say. So uh, but I like like Kingdom Come Superman was pretty like complex and nuanced and shit like that. You know. And uh, I, do you like your Superman wearing underwear on the outside or the yeah, inside? Yeah, I like on the outside. Yeah, me too. New 52 Superman I never clicked with. I just never got with him. He wore underwear on the inside? Is it just like a blue body it's suit? Blue yeah, body he, didn't suit. Wear the, he didn't wear his MeUndies on the outside. How is it that wearing underwear on the inside somehow looks weirder than wearing them on the outside? <laughs> <laughs> like they managed to do it though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah only in comic books. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only medium that can work in. Don't <laughs> worry. Because it doesn't work in the real world. Well, I don't know, Chris. Uh, you know the old Superman movies, the Donna movies. I thought he looked pretty good, like with the underwear on the outside. He did, but he pulled I mean, it off. But he does. Does he wear it on the, in this? In the no, uh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, but who's a better Superman? Christopher Reeve, right? You know. But I mean, who looks? But his costume looks better in this. I think the, this new version of Superman. His costume looks cool, though. I don't know. It doesn't look bad. I, I don't dislike it, but I like that. I like. I'm a fan of the red underwear, man. I like it. I think it's it's too classic. So if you're a fan of underwear, you should go to me on these. Yeah, get some, Why doesn't everybody get red underwear and they just start wearing them outside their clothes? Oh, yeah, the world would be a better place. It says here, please include all the following points during your read. Note: modal is pronounced modal. Uh, and then I don't think they use the word modal. Uh, every I think pair modal of- is a type of fabric. Oh, every pair of MeUndies is made from sustainably sourced modal. Oh, yeah, there it is. A fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. I'll, I'll give them that. Very soft. It is. Nothing can describe the fit and feel of I MeUndies. I wore it at the upfronts the other day. Did you? Yeah, because, like, you know, when you wear a suit, you don't – sometimes you don't want, like, the – You want the, the panty lines? material underneath. So I wore the MeUndies uh, tidy whities Nice. Felt good. If you don't love your first pair, they're free. No questions asked, you. Create all my balls. No questions. It was beautiful. Get him hasn't taken off his man since last. Yeah, he's been wearing well, them that's for a while. He's over only a week. got two pairs of on the way, so he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to rotate. Yeah, plus, they were so small that he can't get them off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shipping is free in the U.S. and Canada. You can save up to eight bucks a pair with their subscription plan. Uh, 20% off your first order when you go to MeUndies.com slash T-E-S-D. Don't forget to tell them uh, we demand a Flanagan-designed yes. pair. We demand it. Or we'll fucking bury you, MeUndies. <laughs> we, we put you where you are. We could take you down, too. Yeah, in a fucking heartbeat. You'll all be on the fucking bread line, you bastards. Don't test us, MeUndies. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's the most difficult <laughs> advertiser, I, I believe, in the history of Tom Steve they've advertised. This Trunk is the Club. one that Trunk Club is, I think, the hardest one for to yeah. motivate because it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, it's not cheap. Well, it's tough if you don't care about looking good, but if you want to look good, I, right? Yeah. There Trunk are two Club. types of men out there. There's just two, just so you know. (laughs) Guys who love shopping for clothes but are short on time and those of you who hate it. Which one are you, Q? I am definitely um, right in between. I'm a mixture of both. No, there's only two. Well, then I I just don't have the time. (laughs) I just don't have the time. Okay. Either way, you can take heart, Q. Yeah? You can get clothes that fit perfectly. You know, you don't want to go shopping. And it's spring, so you need pastel polos and boat shoes, right? I suppose. <laughs> It'd be nice to have your own person. I mean, come on. <laughs> Not really. I mean, boat Trump- shoes are pretty dope. Are they? Yeah. I don't know. Get that's, some, that seems like it's trying too hard. You like Those yacht, dock huh? siders? No, there's like a Sperry. Yeah, they got some pretty nice looking shoes. If you're a fucking nerd. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get it. Right? What are you doing for Memorial Day? Are you going out sailing? I am going to go to the. Uh, <laughs> Not the yacht club. <laughs> I'm going to go to a baseball game. Oh, yeah? No sailing? No sailing. Uh, That's uh, a shocking. Uh, we, we can get a, like could rent a boat. Go out on the. Go oh, you inviting boat. me? Yeah, then you'll get a, play a little yacht rock. 
play our, uh, we'll wear our Sperry's. I'm down. And our pastel <laughs> polos. Fun. You're really going to a baseball game? Who are you going to see? Uh, no. Blue Claws? No, across Mets? town, going to see the Mets. Mets? Oh, okay. Yeah. Going to go see the Mets versus the White Sox. Oh, interleague. A day game. Nice. Very excited. I've always said that I think you need to rekindle your love affair with baseball. Yeah, plus the last time I went to City Field, I got thrown out. So I'm really looking to go there and reestablish <laughs> and make, my reputation. Make up for it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even remember the stadium. <laughs> I got drunk with an aunt. Oh, what was his name? It was, it was an oh, – fuck, he was such a good guy. Was it called Shea back then? It was so long No, it was, City, it, was, <laughs> it was like the first – yeah, he was like an ant, and we met Fitz, at the Fitz bar. Man? I don't know. I can't remember his name. He's one of the very first ants, isn't he? But Fitz we man? got fucked up drunk. He got in trouble with his wife because he got so drunk, and I got tossed out of the uh, stadium. Be Fitzman. I don't yeah. think it was Fitzman. Trunk Club. Trunk Club, anyway, yeah. <laughs> you get your very own personal stylist. Pick your clothes from over yeah. 80 top brands. They'll ship them to your door. Keep what you like. Send back what you don't. It's not just another way to shop online. Your stylist takes the time to understand your unique look. And if you live in Dallas, New York, L.A., Chicago, or D.C., you can stop by a clubhouse, a trunk club clubhouse, uh, like Gidham did. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a subscription service. You try them on. You don't like them. You send them back. You try them on. You, lo- you like them. You keep them. Premium clothes expert advice. You know what's nice about a stylist? I saw it firsthand. Is I want that, a stylist, man. Well, and that they really do a lot. For, like they really work on your ego. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And that's good because um, – I saw them working on Gidham's ego and um, really stroking it and really making him feel good nice. about himself when he walked out of the room. Now you may say, like, well, she's paid to do that. Right. So what? And he's soft in the head, so he believed it. <laughs> 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 so what, though? If, you, if you're feeling good when you walk out of there, what difference does it make? That's true. Right? Yeah, same it, reason it makes, people go to strip clubs. As long as you what? make it your reality. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, you're pretend, like, you, you, you can convince you yourself the strippers good. are in love with you, right? You like you. That is not <laughs> dollars. Trunk Club, I think that's their, their slogan. We're the strip club of, <laughs> of clothing. Um, you, you know, they, they could make it. I'll tell you what, man. I've been thin and in shape and I've been fat. And, and I, won't, I never buy clothes when I'm fat. Right. So when you get thin and you're in shape, and you, feel, you do, you feel a little bit better, man. Yeah, you dress man. up. You were looking good in that suit at the upfronts. Yeah, it didn't look too bad. Oh, you should have went to Trump Club, man. Well, yeah, I wish I had. Yeah, I you guess. fucked up. Um, Trump Club. <laughs> Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but I had me undies on. Well, okay. So there you go. go. That's the first step. Yeah. Maybe next year at the upfronts. Yeah, we'll talk to Trump Club. If we we'll get renewed for another, they'll season. set you up. We'll see. Um, yeah, that's it. That's right. it, man. Trunkclub.com slash T-E-S-D. Go there if you want to look fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to hear about this missing person. Yes. Yeah. 1988. It seemed like it was much easier to snag people back in like the 70s, 80s. Well, nobody and, yeah. knew where you were. You were just gone for hours out at, of at a time. Yeah. And there was, there was no database. No to, cell phone to track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. None of that. Um, a 40-year-old woman left her residence in Florida and mysteriously disappeared. Three days later, she received a message on her answering machine from a woman who sounded just like her daughter saying, help me, help me, let me out, and hey, give me that. Then there were sounds as if somebody was trying to grab the phone, uh, and the caller ID read Starlight, but there was no answer when the woman's mother tried to call the number back. Things got really morbid on April 15th when the severed tip of Diane's right middle finger was found in an area where she was last seen. Two weeks later, a bag containing her neatly folded clothing was discovered in a convenience store's freezer. Oh, God. Two and a half years after that, a local pub- uh, paper published a story about her disappearance. The very next day, her, the woman's brother's girlfriend happened to discover a plastic bag in another convenience store. It had the name Diane written on it and contained items which may have belonged to her. How, in spite how of these bizarre clues. What kind of coincidence is that, though, that the, the, brother-in-law, the brother's wife found it? Um, the very next day, she happened to discover a plastic bag in another convenience store. So does the person – I mean, is it coincidence or is the person close to them and knows like maybe this woman goes to – Oh, yeah. They, goes they to, frequent that store? Yes. So what what kind of odds purpose. are that that somebody – that a family member is going to find a, a piece of evidence? Well, if they know they – like when I worked – when we worked at the stores down in Leonardo, there were people who went there every single day. I'm talking every day they were there. So – 
let's say that they know this one person goes in and buys whatever and they just put the bag there mm-hmm. so that they know this person is like – most people are just going to dismiss it. But the brother's girlfriend might see and be like, what the fuck? Ugh, that is fucked up, man. And she was never – there was no other trace of her ever found. That's so, so where weird. is she, Walt? That's that's the idea behind this segment is uh, <laughs> um, I let you and Q decide what happened. Obviously a BTK-esque – person had abducted her and kept these trophies and when he well and when the time comes and he feels to, the need to fulfill some sort of um, desire or something he releases something into the public to, to and to, so he can read about it and hear about it on TV BTK arguably like maybe not the not with the highest body count Surely, but, but surely one of the top most ten top, weirdest, the uh, top ten most uh, de- evil, demonic, depraved, like deranged, de- deranged. Those That's pictures word, alone, deranged. yeah. Those grave pictures are like holy shit. Can you imagine you're married to BTK and you find all that out? What does that do to your like your? What does that do to his family though? And they like, find I out think my BTK? judgment sucks in relationships. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married to BTK. <laughs> that's got to be like that's that's got to be something you can never recover from. And people remember she took shit to people like you had to have known. Oh yeah, well I, that's you know what I I if she didn't know, that's horrible. And uh, that you know that to have to to like to hear the public say you did know. Yeah, but it's understandable that the public would think that she knew. I mean, how can you live with somebody that long? And be totally oblivious to that fucking kind of secret life he was le- leading. Well, he had a particularly long cooling off period too. <laughs> oh you yeah. Know? So decades. He, yeah, he was acting. Unless he was doing something that nobody knew about. It, I don't think he went from like doing killing people to not like doing something fucked up. Maybe not murder, but he probably was doing something bizarre to fulfill that hole. To fill that hole that like that that deranged aspect that you know whether it be whether it may not even be criminal but just something so weird is that only a a psychopath would do and his wife never never was uh, i I know he was big into stalking people like you know he would stalk them like stalk women for a while and one time he like went into the woman's house that he planned on getting and it it took her so long to get home he got annoyed and left yeah oh yeah he stayed in the closet yeah yeah, and she went she stayed at a friend's house that night yeah and he left a note for her I, wait, I waited for you, right? I think, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. She never went back to that house. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, how weird is it? Is there anything weirder, like, on a personal level, like, you get home and you know somebody's oh, yeah, that, house? Oh, that's yeah, a, that's a crazy violation. You know, yeah. is it like, or at night, like, you're sleeping and, like, somebody may have come in and just, like, looked at you. And even if they don't do anything, they come <laughs> in and they, even if they just look at you and they leave some sort of, like, you know... Uh, so something askew, so that you know someone was in that room, and then they walk out again. Well, yeah, no, that's pretty up there with like, yeah, it's disturbing. Uh, I should stop doing that to people. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! It's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah, they shit. leave a whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay patch on your nightstand. <laughs> like it doesn't seem okay. Oh. Well, these are rare, so I'm going to yeah. overlook uh. the fact you you broke into my house or <laughs> staring at me while I slept. Yeah. I, I did want it for my jersey. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Do I call the cops? They might take it as evidence. I mean, it is. Yeah. These patches are hard to get. <laughs> Um, there's a couple other ones, you know, I mean, they're, they're all just, we talked about it one time, like the, uh, where did he, was he, what did the guy do while he, the one who kept calling the mom for like decades? Oh yeah, we talked about that. What yeah. did he do though? He, he was, he, he was, uh, he worked, um, with the government somehow overseas and yeah, he just, he, they was found that he never really had anything to do with her, her disappearance. But yeah, we, we touched upon that when he would call the mother and mm-hmm. torment her and say, she's still alive and she's here and she's there. And the the mother of this missing lady, um, she never changed her phone number. She never moved cause she was so terrified that if she did, right. that she would never reunite with her daughter. I mean, that's, like That's I said, a, I mean, it's, it's bad enough to go like, okay, your kid goes missing at any age, right? It's bad enough for that to happen, but then to be tormented yeah. for years and years and years, yeah. like, because then it's like in a weird way, still giving you hope. Like, well, maybe, maybe this person can be reasoned with. Well, there's, there's total lunatics that look for, um, that look for, uh, cases 
and so that they could contact uh, relatives and just to get their jollies off. That's how they get their depraved jollies kicks. <laughs> that. And um, they, jollies. It's, it happens in a lot of cases. <laughs> People are like, "What are these guys talking about?" <laughs> jollies. <laughs> I saw such that. an underused word, man. Yeah, it's it's such really a great I'm word. already trying to think about how I can bring it back. <laughs> to my daily There's only life. one way you can, and that's this yeah. instance. Is this how you get yeah. your jollies? It's usually yeah. said with like scorn and contempt. Yeah. <laughs> you heard him? You heard Ted gets his jollies. He likes, yeah. he likes to go stooling. Yeah. <laughs> Goes to somebody's house, stools, leaves a patch behind. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my missing persons case for the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for the month, I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, that's not all you're going to do is uh, is just missing persons. I don't know the ones I find particularly <laughs> weird and interesting. There's so many. Do you read the? You must have read about that mixed A family, right? Hmm? What the mixed A family? That's another one that uh, it was an entire family. This is not a. Uh, this isn't new, but it was. This is the mixed A family murder. Uh, they were found. It's a. Mom, dad, and two little kids, they were found murdered in um, the desert in California. And it was like a whole thing. I'm surprised you didn't see it. It was like Nancy Grace and all that shit covered Ugh, it. God, I hate her. But uh, I know she's the worst. Um, a neighbor surveillance system recorded a vehicle, later confirmed not to be the McStay's family, uh, family's vehicle. And um, the family and friends were trying unsuccessfully to contact them. They eventually broke into the house. Nobody was there. There was no evidence of struggle or foul play. And there was this whole thing where, like, they had, like, their computer browser had – they had done searches on Mexico and all this other shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen this mm-hmm. one. Yeah, and they, went, and they were seen going across the border, they, they think. They couldn't tell if it was yeah. them or not. Yeah. I mean, it turned out it wasn't them because they found them buried in the desert. Yeah, that's – yeah. But well, that uh, guy was, like, an architect. He built, like, fountains and shit. Mm-hmm. And – um they thought maybe it had, had something to do with uh, cartels. Yeah. And then um, I guess eventually they figured it was the, uh, one of his uh, – the guy's business associates. I guess he or, he, he owed him some money. And um, yeah, it says uh, Merritt had – I guess Merritt is the guy's – the mixed day guy's partner. Uh, had a gambling problem and killed the family for financial gain. Said he wrote checks totaling more than $21,000 on his business account in the days after they were killed and then went on a gambling spree at nearby casinos where he lost thousands of dollars. And as of February 2016, he had gone through five attorneys. Mm. And uh, they believe he killed them all with a three-pound sledgehammer, which was found in uh, the grave of uh, the mom and one of the sons. What a way to go, man. What a fucking horrifying, scary, like, oh, shit. Like, this dude is, like, if you see him bashing somebody else's head, uh-huh. like, there's no way he's stopping with them, right? Like, this is how I die. Yeah, this is it. This asshole. Yeah. This fucking jerk off that I used to be partners with or whatever. Huh. So, yeah, there you go, Walt. That's a twofer. <laughs> Two missing families. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Fun here on Overkill. That's why. That's what we like. I mean, hey, if if there was any episode you wanted to be generous to the ants after last week's outpouring, mm-hmm. it's on this one. So give them two. Fucking right. horrific, <laughs> horrible <About death>. yeah. <laughs> tragedies. <laughs> Mine isn't is so tragic. One one I have uh, I have is uh, I was interested in this because I I gotta think. That you guys are in, in danger, either in the past or maybe still, maybe still. But there, it's out there. There's a theory that vibrators and dildos Uh-oh. and sex toys okay. are an open portal. If you use them in any way, in any way, it's an orp- an open portal to demonic realms, and your life is at danger. I mean, is this on a fucking Ooh, what? Catholic Church pamphlet you picked up? Or? It's like a chick pamphlet. Like one of those ch- um, <laughs> Some molded plastic. Tools of the devil is somehow a pathway. As long as you have sex toys in your home, you have a doorway that can allow demons to not only access your life at will, but also torment you, hinder you, and destroy certain parts of your life as it relates to sex and relationships. Oh, have you guys dabbled in uh, toys? Or is it... 
I mean, I don't know if you want to reveal that, but have you ever? Have, it's not a in toys and like, like having a dildo at my ass. No, no, no. But like, right. did you introduce it to right. a relationship? Yes. With, with, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, kind of a question of that. Yeah. But like, of any, course kind I of, have. any kind of uh, device that may enhance. Well, I had a fucking flashlight from Kevin. Remember when I, they, I when remember. that was the sponsor? And, 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 and Ming was fucking couldn't get couldn't stop talking about that flashlight as I recall. Yeah. He he went on to talk about it at length about and <laughs> and he's he surmised that like when he looked at it he just couldn't stop saying I know BQ tore this up. He tore it up <laughs> like no one else could tear this up. He went on to tell this at, to anybody who would listen, <laughs> I <tore it> up? <laughs> yeah. Anybody who would listen, go listen to Taken. Hey, it's fucking disturbing. That is weird. <laughs> he could not stop talking about how you probably destroyed it in every way. I shape, mean, I or tried form. to use it once, and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Well, we know that. Like, I mean, I think Spencer's and places like that have kind of made. This aspect of this this kind of merchandising for this in this this kind of like um, bedroom hijinks, jollies. <laughs> <laughs> They've made it more normal. Spencer's it, doesn't sell sex toys, do they? Oh, well, they sell when we were yes, going. They, yeah, they sell vibrators. I've seen yeah. some crazy stuff in Spencer's that I'm like, I don't know how this store stays really? open without being shut down by like. Oh, because when we were young, it was just like apartment. it was like a vibrator with some some lady using it on her shoulders, no, and we were no. all like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> no, go look at any Spencer's right now; you will be shocked. It's basically like Forty Second Street, nineteen seventy two. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm not kidding. I mean, it sounds like fun. I- prostitutes with gunnery behind the <laughs> registers and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding. Around. I kid you not. I had to kill time in a mall one day, and I walked through, and I looked to see if they had any pops. And that's not sexual. That's our little figures that are, like, super hot right yeah. now. And to see if they carried pops. And I walked through to the back, and I could not believe really the merchandise that is on sale at um, Spencer's right now. Oh, shit. The, yeah. Holy fuck. On the, on the Spencer's website, this is crazy. Yeah. They're, they're like and a full-on sex toy. Now. Yeah, it's just – it's basically oh, – that's what that is. some bonded stuff. That's cool. Well, hold on, Q. And maybe okay. it isn't so cool because I'm trying to tell you right here that yeah, you're, you're opening – you're possessed. <laughs> you're opening a portal <laughs> that allows demons to attach themselves to your soul. The, over the – because I watch porn maybe conservatively speaking four times a day. So somehow that is – Less of a portal than like occasionally whipping out an old well, dildo. It's when you bring in <laughs> old dust, dust it up, <laughs> blow off the dildo <laughs> because demon the, wipe the old stooling off it. They like something that you have like that something that's tangible, right? A tangible thing will will draw a demon closer and put your soul at risk. It says here in this article I'm reading. What if I have a vibrator with the the um, visage of Jesus Christ on it? Will that or can you get I, it, can a priest bless your dildo? Right. Or if I just get or if I just flat out use a crucifix on myself. Yeah. yeah. Is that like the yeah, exorcist? That, right, yeah. Fuck me. Fuck me. I don't I, So you're not you're gonna give it any you're not gonna give any kind of serious I mean these are legit questions. I mean like Spencer's I'm, would be a portal. I'm to hell telling then. you, I'm telling you right, right now, but this article is saying that like Spencer's and uh, and stores like Spencer's have now made it so like these items are not like Something to be um, ordered, ordered in a brown uh, in a brown box that doesn't tell you what it is. Now you right. can walk in and with a big fucking grin across your face, right? Um, with a gigantic grotesque <laughs> item, right? For whatever way you're going to use it on, and <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sensing where you stand on this issue. <laughs> <laughs> there are such. He's like, uh, he's like my house is clean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are such things as sex demons, Q, and the danger in <laughs> masturbating is that one can inadvertently summon a sex demon to attach itself to you through the act of masturbating. And once that demon attaches, it is difficult to get it to leave. It will drive you to masturbate even when you don't want to. You'll be hit with what urges. What is that? <laughs> it's like when I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hit with urges to play with yourself so powerful yeah. that only an orgasm will allow you some temporary relief. It's called being a teenager. But I'm what I'm telling you that the, the, there's some people in the Catholic Church yes. who believe though that these are totems, and if you use these totems, mm-hmm. you're putting your eternal soul at risk. You're taking a chance on having a being 
that's not looking out for your best interests right. attach itself to your back and you'll never get it off. I like that. I call that Sal Volcano. That's not, <laughs> that's not uh, <laughs> I like that a demon is like, I'm going to hide out in this dildo box in a mall until somebody buys me. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. He's not in the box and he's okay. not in the, in the little plastic thing, whatever it is you guys are mm-hmm. using. There's just no way, dude, because there's so many like – like so many – Once you get all worked up, man, things are start – like doors that you can't see, invisible doors open up. Yeah, but think of how many people all have sex toys you, in this nation. Like and fucking everybody. So how – Not everybody. The whole – right. Well, a lot. <laughs> I would say a good percentage of people do. But I would say good, but just as many don't. But let's even say it's a 50-50 split. That means that half of the nation is possibly sex demon possessed? <laughs> Well, you well, well, possibly you, definitely. <laughs> well, you don't see you don't see a rise in the sexual um, sexualization of America Not since as much Spencer's as I'd like to see. since Spencer's has gone to this route of being like, well, they like oh, okay, we're just going to go flat out. Um, he's not I like I like how it's all Spencer's, Spencer's fault. Like <laughs> not the fucking thousands of sex shops that, or online sites right at this. Well, this like is directly the, attributed. But this to is where this is where the the, the mall. Like before, right. we had to go into like the, we had to go into shitty New York to yeah. get these toys. Whoa, in shame. Yeah, oh. well, we're yeah. talking we're talking eighties to New cover York. your face. Now it's like now like mm-hmm. soccer moms are going in. Oh, hold on, I got to pick up uh, milk and. A Some giant fucking black three-headed fucking monstrosity to fucking right, right. It's got the anal attachment. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like now it's become normal. It's just, just as normal as picking up bread, milk, and and um... how awful human <laughs> sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a very sex positive. I mean, uh... are the Catholics really like shit? People are not buying our our garbage on the other demon possession things. How about dildo demons? <laughs> Dildo demon. Yeah. That's a great name for a hockey team. The do Dildo you, demons. I mean, do you. Or like a scary no, porno? Halloween porno? Oh, the Dildo, Dildo demons. demons. Yeah. Innocently go shopping in Spencer's. <laughs> <laughs> they bring it back for the big Halloween party. <laughs> do you use your imagination a lot? Um, when you're in the act of these. I have found myself veering back towards imagination in recent years. It's not good. Really? It's not good. When we imagine having sex with another via masturbation, we are actually summoning. Oh, I don't think I ever think about me having sex with someone. It's always like... Well, don't... Well... It's always one of my parents having sex with someone. (laughs) Summoning the power of the spirit realm to manifest itself to things that you don't even... You don't even realize. What do you mean? Can you clarify this? The spirit you are summoning. We are actually summoning the power of the spirit realm to manifest things we are imagining. Mm. So you may think you're imagining right. something great, but what's really what's really controlling that imagination? You do, you're not even in control of anymore. So, so, you're, so your your <laughs> memories or you summoning up something in your mind is 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 what's it going to do to you? Well, it's going to open. It's opening up. Um, it's going to attach itself like a leech. Right. That's what I'm reading from this. It attaches itself to your to your so body. So if I'm imagining, say, and this isn't true, but let's just say <laughs> Stacy and Gidham having sex, you're saying a demon can do that? I'm saying that, that that's probably not even your real imagination right. going to work right there. That's just – That does sound awfully demonic. <laughs> I was going to say that. I like right there. That's got to be proof positive because who wasn't saying you're person possessed. would. I was just saying. You know, I just imagine things. <laughs> I don't know. So, well, that, that's what I, it I mean. Look it's like out a there. Walrus tripped on a fucking <laughs> on a fine, fine lady. <laughs> Like somehow that walrus at SeaWorld fucking jumped out of his tank and landed on a spectator. <laughs> so wait a second. So, okay. So dildo demons. Also, if you're like, all right, I'm going to jerk off, but not use porn. Not use a totem. Yeah. I'm, I'm Don't just, use I'm, a totem, I think, is what we're trying I'm to say I'm just going to jerk here. off. But no, you're saying you can't even imagine someone. Otherwise, like, like a person. I think, I like, think let's it's say I'm going to jerk off I to that lady. Using, I think it's using, like I said, these totems, these things that um, – that are physically there, mm-hmm. it makes it easier for. You know how you hear room. stories about like dudes will fuck a couch. Mm-hmm. You, you, you've heard that, right? Yeah. Like they'll put their dick between the cushions and go. Does a couch become no a pot? No, no. Okay, 
Because it's got to be created. No, I didn't see nothing in the article about a couch. Right. Okay. What if I jerk off to a lady wearing a hat that says America was never great? <laughs> <laughs> that, think, that's inviting trouble. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're. If, it's not good that you're doing that anyway. Yeah. Well, but I would keep away <laughs> from a couch or right. or even just your hand or whatever. But I would stay away from. I would stay away from tools and devices. Right. I generally do. I don't see a reason to include tools in my general goings on. Not even like a vice grip. <laughs> 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 it's hurting, Daddy. <laughs> it should hurt, right, Daddy? <laughs> but that's um, that's something wow. to think about, though. I'll yeah. put thought to it. All right, our last SD card ran out in the middle of that conversation. So, uh, Walt, you're about to do the big reveal. The big, big reveal. reveal. But, yeah. Um, you got to what? What I'll we have to just recap real quick. Yeah. Um, I was telling you that um, this this story is not on the internet. This story is a story that will be breaking, and if hopefully, like I said, maybe maybe it gets picked up by the internet and it goes viral, mm-hmm. and we'll get credited with uh, breaking uh, a story of this magnitude in the paranormal world. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the, I'm sure a lot of people will dismiss it. Um, <laughs> Two of them are at this table, <laughs> <laughs> but I got this email, yeah, um, from a listener. Revealing the what's going on with what the world, what, I guess the world's biggest retailer, mm-hmm. which is uh, Walmart. Uh, and I asked you guys, is there technology out there that uh, that will take an email from my inbox against my will, so I can't access it no more? You guys said there isn't. Well, it's po- or, I suppose it's anything's possible. Right? You said it's possible. Like maybe the program has something that would delete it. It's weird though. Cause it would delete it off. Let's say they use Yahoo or Gmail. It would delete it off their server because it's not truly on your right. server. Like you said, unless you take a screen cap or something. Once I got it and in, in the middle of the night, I read it. I was like, "Wow, this is this is amazing. This is cool. This is definitely a story I'd like to uh, tell." And then the next morning, when I went to re- look at it again, it was gone, and I didn't delete it, and I mm. can't find it anywhere. Um, and I asked you, Q. Is it possible you dreamed it? No. Okay. No, I'm not, definitely not. All right. Um, I know the difference between fucking real life and a dream. I don't, which is why I put my gun up a lot at night. <laughs> and I asked you, Q, when's the la- do you frequent Walmart a lot? And you said you haven't been in a Walmart since 2000 with us, yeah, which unless, I find very hard to believe. But they don't have Walmarts in New York. So yeah, I've, I've just never had a... In, definitely not in New York City. So I just never had a reason to go in Walmart. Man, this is what... Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. I don't even have a reason to say the name correctly. Yeah, I don't even care enough. <laughs> but when the big debate came because I said, well, Walmart is just a shithole. It's just a target, like a shittier target. And that seemed to anger you. Uh, oh, I, I didn't think... I wasn't angry about that. I was sure? angry that you uh, were not tre- Like, you were immediately going in thinking like, oh, this story has something to do with, again, fucking... Bathrooms with people going in it that don't belong going mm-hmm. in. That you thought the story was going to lead into some sort of transgender bathroom. No, I didn't. Didn't he? No. no first, oh, because you you said that uh, you the, said it actually. I didn't. I, I brought up the transgender. Yeah. Again. you're crazy. No, I you, did no. Not for first, 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 first. <laughs> hold on. But what happened was you talked about the logo. You said what color is it? Q said right. Walmart. Yellow. Yes, I asked you guys what color is Walmart's logo. Right. What, Q, what did you say? Well, I said you the said smiley yellow. face is yellow. Right. Yeah, which, which is wrong. The it's smiley not, face is yellow, but the, so but the right. logo is... <laughs> so what I said was right. <laughs> no, I asked you for the logo, not the smiley face. The smiley face isn't part of the logo. I mean, I'm not in a fucking advertising major, so I don't know how I'm supposed to figure this shit out. You asked me, I remember the smiley face. The, the lettering the letter, I said, right. the lettering around here anyway is blue. 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 Mm-hmm. Blue. But you will also find Walmart <laughs> <laughs> letters that are red, right. white, Green, and these are very uncommon to find these to find these stores that have these colors. Right. And I asked you why do you think, and you and you were like, and you were quick to think that it maybe had something to do with politically. Well, some like motivated. a like a blue state, like yes. like New Jersey would be a blue state, and, so. right? And the green one would be. Bec- would well, be, I said like in like one of those where pot is legal states. <laughs> And I think we were like, well, Walmart like Amsterdam, would Walmart's. sell pot, so why would they care? Well, I mean, they're just blending into the community was my thought. I mean, really, I wish that the recorder had kept going because I was roundly mocked <laughs> for, about, <laughs> for about three minutes for just making what I thought was a fairly educational guess, you know? Uh, and it is funny. That we, we said Walt's the only one who knows the answer. But if we dare guess the wrong thing, he's like, you're fucking idiots. You're small-minded idiots. Well, yeah, and then I was just like, if it's such a big secret – 
then how am I expected to fucking guess it on the first try? But, but if you're going to guess the secret, yeah. which you were really trying hard to do, well, you would think you would try to do it I based on it. doing overkill. So it has to be right. something that is worthy of, of, of the sci-fi paranormal okay. world. And uh, saying, Obama decided. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, with the limited information I have, I made a guess. Then maybe you shouldn't be guessing with that limited... Uh, yeah. Information. Well, all right. So next time you ask me a question, I'll just silently stare at you and not hazard a guess. It was awfully brazen of you. To fucking... <laughs> so I was wrong. Yeah. Yes, you were wrong. Yeah, turns right. out you weren't right about the biggest secret <laughs> in retailing history. <laughs> What's Walmart known for? Uh, white trash. No. Uh, oh. What's Walmart? Fatties on automated no. carts. Yeah. What's Walmart's appeal to the to consumers? Uh, the low price. Low price. Low price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <So> this. <laughs> <laughs> he says it after me, and you say it just so he's like, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Then <laughs> they seem to be in agreement. Low price, right, guys? <laughs> so this person emailed me to tell me that. that one of the ways that Walmart is able to keep their prices so low is because in certain Walmarts, and they are color coded, right? There are doors, <laughs> and certain that have been color- opened up by people who use dildos <laughs> in the aisles. <laughs> <laughs> and there are doors. Yeah. These doors are, are, are secret doors in the Walmarts, mm-hmm. and they're color-coded by the logos. Okay. And some of these doors can go through time and space. Oh, okay. And, they are, and Walmart is, is getting cheaper you labor. You expected me to get this on the first guess? Well, I didn't even ask you to guess. Sure you, you did. I wasn't asking you to guess. You I said, asked why you, do you I asked think? You, I asked you, do you know why? The, do you, do, right, do you ever see what color is the fucking logo? No, and but the follow-up was, was, what was what color was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you asked if I know why that is. I hazarded a guess. I, I just say no. You could just yeah. say no. You don't know. You have to embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being like. There's nothing right. wrong with being like. No, I don't know. Tell me. Okay. Well. <laughs> but some of the some of the products that Walmart is making, this person revealed to me. Yeah. Are are were made by people who have been dead oh. for decades, if not maybe even centuries. Isn't that the story on Phantasm? He raises those corpses, turns them into those midgets, and they work for him. That is the that's the story right. of phantasm. But yeah. they only take but God. Did, there is talk. there is egg on my face. <laughs> yeah, here. But like, but like a red a, a red yeah a red logo at Walmart may have a door that can send you into the past. Whoa! A green one. So you don't have to work at Walmart. It's before it existed. I guess <laughs> you go right? back to high school and study. Well, yeah. no, that's how they get. Like, they get. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not open to, to the customers of Walmart. Right. Only the people who are in the know. The big wigs, the people who who right. the, movers and, the movers and shakers, and what they're doing. Uh, what technology is at work here? Or is it arcane? Did, he wouldn't. He didn't tell me what, uh, or he or she. I, you know, I, I shouldn't say he. Maybe who uh, are the big wigs at Walmart? <laughs> I mean, I've uh, the managers. I don't or? even think it's the managers. I, I think it's the. I think it's the. I'm talking about billionaires and zillionaires. Oh, like from the Walton S- family. So, yeah. are they building? The WalMarts on yes. these ley lines, these key lines of, yes. of magic. These, these, these are these these doors were there, and the WalMarts were built around. Oh these doors. shit! And that's how they're keeping prices so low. Is they're getting actually real? When you say, "Oh, it's slave wages," well, guess what? Fucking slaves made some of the fucking products. Dead around. slaves. Yeah. Can you imagine? Like you're alive and you're a slave, and then you die, and it's like, guess what you're gonna do? No, no, they're not. They're, <laughs> no, they're going into. No, they're take these products were made like that shirt if you got at Walmart. Shit, sure, let's just say I did. Um, <laughs> the Wu Tang thing. <laughs> it could have been made like if you bought it at Walmart. Yeah. It could have been made by a slave who's been dead for a thousand years. That's, that's pretty cool. That's was, pretty cool. This person was telling me that's how they keep the prices low, and the, and they can go into the future. And they could figure out, like, 
the, the, you know, like where to where to buy stuff and what's going to become hot, and they can stock it before anybody knows. That's why they're always on the. That's why they always have the the merchandise before anybody knows they even want it. I, I feel like I mean I don't want to try to debunk this, but I feel like all this shit at Walmart is made by slaves who are very much alive. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I mean, they get all their shit from like Bangladesh and India and all these places that. Well, they put. Of course, they can't put fucking made in fucking in uh, in Egypt in fucking you know BC on the tag. They got it. Like they're even instructed. So they're making this shit in in the past. So are they dead in the past? No, they're alive, and then they just transport it through the door and put it on the shelves, and for consumers of 2016 to buy. How is that cheaper? Yeah, how is because it? Because they they're, they're, they're not even paying for it to be made. Yeah, but you still got to set up factories in ancient Egypt for them to make. And them. nobody's like, "What's what's in that pyramid?" <laughs> like, well, I hear a lot of machinery. <laughs> well, like the industrial was, revolution had happened. We don't know what was in those pyramids. Nobody knows. Back I, then. I don't think it was fucking like like Santa's weavers workshop. and that kind of shit. Are they? But they're just making clothes or toys or everything. I think it's. I don't think it's food. Because no. food wouldn't taste proper. It sounds like uh, 112263, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah, we got, went back in time for that hamburger meat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's that? It's a Stephen King, King book. book where like this guy found a door into like it, – it's past. present day and he found a door back into the 60s and he would go buy – In his diner. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and he would go buy uh, hamburger meat real cheap and then bring it back to the uh, – that's how he was able to keep his prices so low. So you know what? Well, but he, this, I believe this person 100% said that now. like it's 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 definitely hard goods. It's not like it's not food. Mm-hmm. Right. And the future door is for technology. Future door, they only use it for technology. He said. It just seems so short sighted to me, because if you had a door to the future, I think that you wouldn't even need to make a Walmart. You could just buy the correct stocks and make billions of dollars that way. Like, why go through the trouble? Of making a Walmart. Uh, maybe it's a, a front for something else. The spiral goes down even deeper then. Oh, yeah. This, go, this guy said that he was going to contact me with even more <laughs> explosive um, information regarding what Walmart's. This doing. is on the internet? It's anywhere? not on the internet. You looked? I looked everywhere for this and it, it's nowhere. So, so he made it up. Well, how know. does he know? Does he work at Walmart? Yes. Is he a bigwig? He's seen the door. He hasn't gone through it. He's not allowed to go through it. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything online. So we well, definitely are breaking we're this. We're breaking this. And now, it, is this every Walmart? No, it's not in every Walmart. He, but he was very quick to say, he goes, there's, that's why you don't see a lot of red Walmarts. Because you see a red Walmart, there's definitely a door in there. So the, the sign outside. Yes. So but who why the fuck are they advertising that? this to? To the people in the fucking know. It's not for you and me to walk through. But if the people are in the know are like, hey, let's go to the fucking Walmart with the future door. They're like, oh, there it is with the giant red sign. <laughs> like, wouldn't they just know already? Like, wouldn't someone have told them? Who? The, whoever the big wigs are, the right? The big wigs know, but they, they, they got to know where, where their doors are if they're out and about. Yeah, but you don't country. think this, import, this information is so important that they're not going to just drive up to Walmart until they see a blue logo? Like, they're going to know which one they're going to. Who? The big wigs. You're Wait. saying that a big wig goes to who are they? Walmart. Who are they changing the colors for? They're ch- it's a, it's like they live. You you and I but, see a red one. We're like, oh, right, but who why is that they? red? It's usually yellow. So oh, who sees it's a red, red state. <laughs> 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 but but yet somebody in right. the know is like, oh, we we, we got to go to a but red one because people, we got to go back to 19. But these people in the know don't already know what which ones have the doors in it. They're gonna drive around to Walmart so they see a red one. Well, isn't it a lot easier than being like... No, it's fucking way uneasy. Why? You're just going to hit five Walmarts until you come to a red one, or you're going to know which one is why? Shouldn't they have memorized which one's the one in fucking Jersey is the one with the door to the past? Maybe they did too, but just for just for clarity's sake, they got <laughs> like they put the red one up there. They're like, oh, there's no doubt about it. We're at the right fucking Walmart. Yeah, we don't got to waste time going in and seeing, <laughs> oh, well, where the fuck's the future door? Oh, got it. Right. And the future door is not visible... To you, so or the people any- entrusted with this technology are people who might go into the wrong Walmart. <laughs> like that's the level of fucking stupidity that these people have. They might accidentally go, "Oh no, the one with the with the door to the future is 13 miles up the road." I'm sorry, but guys. We fucking passed already. I'm sorry, guys. Let's <laughs> just go on the jug handle and go back to the fucking future. Maybe. Like, when, what are you talking about? Maybe when they put the maybe when they put the blue Walmart logo on there, it just turns that color anyway. They can't help it. 
put a blue logo up there, all of a okay. sudden, then it turns red. They can't stop it from turning red. Uh, nah. I mean, okay. that opens up a whole other question. Right. But why? But because, I mean, but I like color it. is huge. If you look it back, color is a, is a deep and a vital part of the paranormal, though. Okay, so it just changes the, mo- mo- the molecules on the plastic. I'll buy that. That'll so buy. you're saying they're all put up as blue, and then some eventually change to red. Right. Or that's green. a theory. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> okay. It's the working theory we have here. I that just, that I just made up now. on the fly. But yeah, he didn't say, say that. This person didn't say that in the email. This right. person just said that. Well, he's like, small brain. This guy. Yeah. Let's no. just accept that as fact. I like. This. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like, if there's listeners out there who maybe are are near a green or a red, yeah. Please don't go in there and say anything. No. Don't I risk would, your life. Don't go in there and try to make trouble by like or looking around or making jokes even about it. I mean, if they're using slaves from Egypt a thousand years ago, I he I think their shit Egypt. could be even cheaper. <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> he didn't say he didn't say Egypt specifically, but he right. said, "How do you think they keep the the cost down so low? They're using they're using slave labor." And slaves who worked on, the, on a shirt that you may be wearing right now may be have been dead for hundreds of years, hmm. and they just bring the product back through the door, put it on the shelf, and sell it. But that, okay. but that would defeats, necessitate mass production. It just defeats the whole purpose of the industrial revolution. You're actually literally going backwards in time to to produce stuff, and it would take longer. You would think, yeah, of course. It would only take. Let's say, okay, Walmart is like, hey, we need fucking, we need a. a hundred we need a gross of fucking Wu Tang shirts. Yeah, but some crazy Egyptian bitch on a loom is faster than just a he machine. He didn't say Egypt. He did not say But anybody, any slave. human. Now on anybody could be a slave. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the work that they're gonna do is not quicker than a machine that does it. Right. Maybe they went back to a time maybe they went back to the fifties when they had the machines that were making T shirts. Getting nineteen fifties prices to do it now. But aren't nineteen fifties prices <laughs> in Bangladesh and Somalia. They're like these people make like fucking three cents a day. You're saying they're like we can save money if we just use a time portal and get like maybe one cent a day for these slaves or free. Free. We could save three cents. Mm. And I guess if you multiply that by all the Walmarts and all the shirts. I guess. But what about the technology? So they go to the future and get technology and bring it back? You no, know, they're they're developing they're developing technology based on what they when they go through the future, he said. It's a door that's only he only this was only sentence. The future door is only used to gar- to garner information about technology. Technology Walmart uses to its benefit. Mm-hmm. Okay. But how would they Ahead of anybody else, how are they doing? Because they have a door. Yeah, but I mean, Duh. in what way? <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm asking. I'm like, in what way is it is it shown that they're ahead of Target? Like, how are they doing better than Target? Target doesn't have this door. Well, who, they're in making, the same who's business. Making more money. But you're saying that as if you know. Who's on top? Oh, uh, Walmart definitely. By how much? By a lot. Yeah, I mean, just what by, the fuck by virtue of the fact that there's way more WalMarts. <laughs> Yeah, but not so many that I believe they have a door to the future that's putting them ahead of the game. That's the only way they stay ahead is that door. But they're not so far. They're not using the door right then because they're not so far ahead. Because they should be blasting everyone else out of business. They should They should be they the only are. store left on the planet. They will. They almost are, really. It's sickening. But I, I've never seen – I don't see Walmarts where no. I live. Yeah, we know. So how are they breaking – how are they breaking – but I see Targets. So Target has a, has a grip Maybe on New Target York City? Maybe Target has something, too. I don't know. I didn't hear from the guy from uh, Target yet. Sure. I don't want to discount Target <laughs> stores. <laughs> they just discovered their doors. <laughs> Maybe they have All something right. different. Or maybe, went to, maybe Walmart <laughs> in the future will buy Target. Like Target bought uh, – no, like Sears brought Kmart. All right. Yeah, and Target's you – know like tar- You know that Kmart and Sears are fucking hurting right now, right? Why do you think? Why well, do because you think? they're fucking both like – so antiquated and like unhip like you can never hip up sears again and kmart was never well, hip. I'll, I'll give you this walmart's total assets at 20 uh 2.3 billion 203 billion walmart's total assets are 203 billion targets are about 41 billion so there is something and How target 200 compared 240 to- so there are so like so 200 million more assets than Target has. No, like 160, no. right? 160 more. Okay, billion. Well, maybe, 
maybe now. Still we'll, sadly, now, by proving my case. Maybe yeah. now, the, but it still there's seems like credence to the door. I mean, it just seems like they should still have a bigger lead, given that they have but access still, to both the future and the past. But it's 2016, though. Maybe they, maybe that lead will be. Who knows what it'll be in a couple years from now? And you're saying that the doors mm-hmm. were already there, and that's why they choose these places to build them. You said they build right. the tar- they build the stores around the doors. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know if they're there. That kind of information, I don't know. All right. I believe it. Yeah. Well, Target you- is technically more profitable than Walmart, though. How so? They make more in terms of um, percentage wise. They make more money. Their profit margin. Their markup is probably more. Yeah, I know Walmart does a lot of like loss leader type shit. Yeah, yeah. Huh. The only reason I ever go to Walmart is because it's close, and the fucking hottest black girl ever works there, and I just like to fucking go to her register and look at her for a minute. <laughs> And then look for doors. Is she, is she wearing a Make America or America was never a great hat? <laughs> she could wear whatever the fuck she wanted, man.
This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at smodcast.com. <laughs>